Tonight, the bright lights of the food world come to Miami. We are coming to you tonight beachside from the Delano Hotel. This begins four nights of consecutive coverage of the South Beach Wine and Food Festival. We're kicking things off with an event called The Q. Can you figure that out? It's about barbecue. So appropriately enough, we're gonna be chatting with our good friend Guy Fieri, Emeril Lagasse, and a host of chefs from around the country about their special barbecue ingredients and also their favorite cities in the US for good barbecue. Bami taco. We've got pork butt that was rubbed with poison, ginger, garlic, soy, put into a tortilla shell, kimchi slaw on top, cotija cheese, cilantro, little lime juice with my barbecue sauce. It's a back of deal, man. Go ahead. I'll hold the mic. We are serving a slow roasted rib. Uh, Spice with Creole spices and the beta root beer glaze from uh, Louisiana. Where are your favorite places to go for barbecue? Well, I have two favorite barbecue states. One is Texas and one is North Carolina where I grew up. And actually their barbecue styles are very similar. The meat is different, but it's all about the meat. In North Carolina it's about pork. In Texas it's obviously about beef slow cooking it using indigenous wood, hickory in North Carolina and post oak in the hill country of Texas, so that's it. We are at night two of the South Beach Wine and Food Festival. We're at the Burger Bash. It's always one of our favorite events, and obviously a favorite of a lot of others too, because there are 32 chefs here from 11 different states. They're gonna be preparing, if you can believe it, 65,000 hamburger patties. Holy cow, my apologies to this fine cow behind me who, being a true Miami cow, has brought lots of bling. But speaking of bringing, these chefs have brought great ingredients from all over we're gonna be talking with them about what makes the hamburger such an important part of our food culture. What are you cooking up tonight? We have 100% brown wagyu beef uh, mixed with newski bacon and onion jam. We folded it into the beef. It's got smoked tomato aioli, watercress, confit cheese, confit tomatoes, and rosemary ciabatta bun. Uh, we're doing what we call the, the Long Island hangover. I grew, I grew up on Long Island and a lot of nights we'd end up at White Castle and wake up with a hangover. So we're serving a, you know, kind of a play in the White Castle Burger with a Bloody Mary shot. What is it about a burger that makes it so accessible and fun? Why is it the quintessential American food? Well, it's an indulgence. You know, not everybody gets to have a burger. Not everybody can eat it because of their diet. And it used to be because of their income. Meat's expensive. But when you get that perfect combination between the meat and the vegetables, the way it's seasoned, the way it's cooked, all the accoutrements that are with it, that's what makes it happen. And last question, what is it about a burger that makes it so great? Beefy, crusty, fatty with bread. I mean, it, it really, it's kind of seminal. It's like a bowl of pasta with tomato sauce. It flips every brain pleasure center that you, that you have. The 2012 Burger Bash has officially come to a close with three very happy winners, starting with Guy Fieri, who takes home the Best Dressed Award. No, not for his tats, but for his burgers, which of course are well-dressed as he always is too. 
The People's Choice Award goes to Michael Simon, who takes it home for the third year running, if you can believe it. This is a coveted award, a big honor for him. And the Judges Award, which is really fantastic, considering the top talent was here tonight, went to a very little known gourmet catering company here in Miami called Whisk. Our congratulations to all of the winners, and we now are headed to Robert Irvine's Party Impossible. What would you say it is about a hamburger that makes it such an appealing food in general? It's a complete package. You have everything all in one spot. You don't have to worry about going over here for your potato or for your vegetable. It's all in one nice little package, ready to go. You guys brought it home. Congratulations for the home team. Thank you very much. Let's go Miami. Woo! We are here at Party Impossible. It's not so impossible to get here, I assure you. But what a great night. It's being hosted by Robert Irvine, who, as you of course know, is host of Dinner Impossible and Restaurant Impossible, the new show. Speaking of impossible, though, he has got some very nearly impossible tasks to undertake at tonight's party. I'm going to let you hear about them directly from Robert, and let's see whether he can pull them off. Take our viewers who weren't here through the task of what you just had to do. I had to hang upside down and make a six foot hoagie from six feet in the air. And then the last challenge was to make ceviche from a whole snapper, but all the ingredients were in a dunk tank filled with um, uh, kids' balls. Over in the corner there, put them into a trolley, bring the trolley up on the stage and make ceviche. Five minutes. Thank you so much to Robert Irvine who proved tonight beyond a shadow of a doubt that the impossible truly can be possible. That wraps up night two of the South Beach Wine and Food Festival for us, and we will see you tomorrow night three. We'll be at the brand new Marlins Stadium. Hey guys, we are standing at the second baseline in the brand new Marlins Park. This is amazing. The stadium's not even open yet. We're standing beneath the retractable roof in this phenomenal new sports facility. It's got an aquarium behind home plate. It's got a swimming pool in the outfield, and it's got a somewhat tacky home run feature, which I guess involves lots of lasers and fountains, which is in the outfield. But tonight's star attraction is the cuisine. We've got four very, very talented chefs, Hetty Goldsmith, Michelle Bernstein, Scott Conant, and Laurent Tornell, who are preparing signature dishes on all of the baselines. This is a really great night. It's a particularly unique event for South Beach, and we can't wait to check it out. So what have you chosen to prepare for this evening? So we made four things. One is something very well known to Michi's customers. It's our croqueta, which is a crispy, um, crispy on the outside, oozing blue cheese and jamón serrano on the inside with big jam. Oxtail stew, freshly tossed with pasta. Uh, we have country fried quail with gravy and biscuits and a spicy pear sauce. And then we have an octopus salad with a spicy Peruvian style potato salad. What are you feeling being under the bright lights of this stadium? When I first walked in, I was just completely overwhelmed. I mean, I was so excited, I felt like a kid. So, it's not baseball food, clearly. There's no, like, Creamy polenta fricassee of truffled mushrooms, braised short ribs of beef with a vegetable and farro risotto, crispy prosciutto with pickled eggplant burrata and uh, galleta olives. Not something you're gonna eat at a baseball stadium, obviously, but who cares? Look at this place, isn't it unbelievable? Lauren, you got third base. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're preparing. We have some prime rib tonight with some uh, cream spinach, Meatball with uh, fried polenta, some uh, hot dog with jalapeno, 
and then uh, I have a little chopped salad. Now, are you a baseball fan? Somehow. <laughs> How cool is it that you get to bring it home? You get home plate. Home plate! I'm very excited. I'm so happy. Look at this place. It's ridiculously cool. It's so state of the art. I'm so thrilled for Miami to have something this spectacular. And that we're here tonight. It's amazing. Tell us a little bit about what you're preparing tonight. Uh, we did um, a wonderful uh, peanut butter s'more. I had to include peanuts, lemon meringue pie with Meyer lemon, and milkshake, black and white malted milkshake with junk in the trunk cookies. We are in the outfield, in fact, center field here at Marlins Park. We've had such a blast. I know for me, this is the closest I will ever get to being on a ball field in a major league stadium. Absolutely fantastic. We've had such a blast. This event truly was a home run. And now it's off to the best thing I ever ate. We are back in the beach. I don't think I've spent this much time on a beach and not been in a bathing suit, but that's okay because we are having a blast here at the best thing I ever ate, late night bites and sweets. We're gonna find out how wild things can get in South Beach when it gets a little bit of sugar in its system. We have a strawberry puree on the bottom. We have a white chocolate mousse, dark chocolate ganache, and then we've made out of a tart dough, pat sucre, we made a little bit of crumb for the top. So it's kind of like a deconstructed tart. And what are you serving tonight? Well, you know, this is the best thing I ever ate party. Uh, the theme this year for the late night eats was late night. So we've got like tots and we've got like little hot dogs and my favorite drink ever, which is a cherry limeade. And it's a virgin drink, which is perfect for a food and wine festival because there are people that don't drink, you know? And I always like to say, everyone needs a designated walker. <laughs> yeah. Best thing I ever ate. Gosh, too hard to pick just one. So many great treats this evening. We had a blast. We hope you enjoyed our coverage. Sadly, this is all coming to a very quick close. We've got one more night, which is tomorrow evening. Andrew Zimmern's Trucks on the Beach. Stay tuned for that coverage coming right up. No, it is unreal. Wow. That's high praise. No, it is like these two things are the best dessert I've ever had. Wow. We've made it to the fourth and final night of the festival. This is the closing night party. Trucks on the Beach, hosted by Andrew Zimmern, in celebration of the food truck phenomenon that has captivated foodies throughout the USA. I know I've got my faves back in New York City, but I'm so excited to try some new food trucks here in Miami. There are 20 in total at tonight's party. I think that might be a little bit too many for me to try, but we're gonna do the best we can. Let's get started. A little bit about the menu. What are the offerings out of the truck? We're doing jerk pork tonight. It's on a little potato bun, a little jalapeno jelly, caramelized onions, and um, a little cheddar cheese. These items range from uh, burecas. Uh, it's a filo dough stuffed with uh, potatoes, and I have another one stuffed with eggplant. I'll have shawarma, I have falafel, I have kibe platters, I have kebab. We've made a fun twist on it for adults. We got the grilled blue and bacon, goat cheese and prosciutto, um, a harvest, which is uh, spiced apples and Havarti cheese on multigrain bread. That just about wraps it up for New York Insider TV's very special coverage of the 2012 South Beach Wine and Food Festival. I hope you enjoyed eating along with us. I gotta say, I can't remember half of it, but it was all delicious. 
We'll see you next time on New York Insider TV, the place where we bring you a taste of life on the inside. And now it's time for me to take a well-deserved nap. <laughs> <laughs>